gonna keep our eyes up here. Everything's good. Hey, how are we doing tonight? We're doing good. I am so excited to be back. So excited. Larry and I were out last week. We were in LA. Who's ever been to California? Anybody? Okay. Quite a few of you in here. Yeah. Hey, listen up. I love Cali. I love that it's not humid there, but the heat is real. Larry and I got to go to Disneyland for our very first time. Guys, if I'm being honest with you, I think that I like Disneyland better than Disney World. And I know that is, <laughs> I know, I'm giving a few thumbs up like, yes, you just have to go sometime. But on the topic of Disney, so Larry and I weren't here last week, but there was like a lot of us still here. We saw the outfits, it was amazing. We were having so much FOMO as we couldn't be here, but we felt like we were here because a lot of you were dressed up like us. I love how so many people just said that they were Larry after drawing a beard on their face. Like they did nothing else, but they're like, if I have a beard on me, I'm Larry. And so Larry's a vibe, I get it, I'm like, I'm just basic. I feel like Larry would have been pretty fun to dress up as. And so we had a Larry winner last week and we're really excited that we're gonna get a go to Disney World with her. Um, and maybe we'll do something like this in the future. A little, some more things like this, but we're really glad to be back with our Youth for the One family tonight. Um, and man, it's our last kind of service night before Summertime is over, y'all. School is coming. I talked to quite a few of you before this and you're like, don't even say that word. Um, and so next week is gonna be a lot of fun, but tonight, God has given me a word and I believe that it's for at least just someone in here. I know it was for me a few months ago and God's still working in me with this word and I believe he wants to speak in such a unique and special way tonight. And so I want you to have your phone pulled out, taking notes. I want you to tag us after you're done taking your notes and let everybody that follows you on whatever platform you post these on that you love Jesus and you're about what he's about. And so take notes, let God speak, and it's gonna be an amazing night together. And so if I could go ahead and have you stand to your feet, we're gonna go right in to the reading of the word. Listen up, listen up. If any time you should listen, it's for the reading of the word of God. His words are the most important. So I'm gonna be in the book of Exodus tonight. And has anybody heard of the story of Moses before? Anybody at all? If you haven't, that's okay, we're gonna dive deep into some of it tonight, but we're gonna be talking about a, name, a man named Moses. And Moses was anointed and appointed for a really special purpose and a special mission. And we're gonna go specifically to a time where Moses has a really unique encounter with God in a way that he's actually never experienced God before. And so we're gonna read about it a little bit here. I want you to follow along if you don't have it pulled up on your Bible, on your Bible app, follow along on the screen. I'm in Exodus 3, one through 14. And this is what it says. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, I think that's how you say it, y'all. I don't know. It was a place. It was the mountain of God, so that's all that matters. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Imagine you're like out doing your thing and then you're next to a bush and like it just becomes on fire and God's like, it's me. I don't know what I would do. Moses saw that the bush was on fire, but it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. 
The Lord said, listen up to this part. I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. Wow, I probably said half of those wrong. And now the city of the Israelites has reached me. Listen up to this part. God says, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. And God doesn't say, so I'm telling you this because I now have seen this and I'm gonna take care of it myself because he could. No, God says, so now go. I am sending you, say you. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. And this is Moses' first response. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. And Moses goes on, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what do I tell them? God says to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. I wanna pause really quick. We have a little bit more reading because everything I'm reading is really crucial to what we're talking about. But if you're like, I am who I am, what does God even mean when he says something like, I am who I am? And it's really important, these words that God says, because I am who I am when God says this to Moses. It's the English translation of the first person, singular Hebrew verb, which means to be. And so God is saying, I will be what I will be. And when God describes himself in this way to Moses, he's saying that I am self-sufficient and, I, and I'm self-existent and I am I'm the sustainer and creator of all things. And so I don't need no one or nothing to get anything done because I am who I am. I sustain you, I protect you, I've created you. I am who I am. And so this is what, and so you would think like after God drops that truth bomb, Moses would be like, God, you're right. You're right, you are who you are, that's all I need. No, 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 no. Listen to this, we're gonna to skip to Exodus 4, one through five. I didn't want you to stand like for forever, so we're skipping a bit. They're still having this conversation. And so God is like still telling Moses, I I'm gonna show up in all these miraculous ways, promise, like just trust me. And Moses answers in Exodus 4, one through five. Well, what if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, the Lord did not appear to you? Then the Lord said to him, he's so patient, what is that in your hand? A staff, he replied. The Lord said, throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground and it became a snake and he ran from it. Then the Lord said to him, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. So Moses reached out and took hold of the snake and it turned back into a staff in his hand. This, said the Lord, is so that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, has appeared to you. And we continue on a few more verses. Exodus 4, 10 through 17. And Moses says after hearing this, pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. He still doesn't get it. The Lord said to him, who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. And Moses says, pardon your servant, send someone else. 
Then the Lord's anger burned against Moses and he said, what about your brother Aaron the Levi? I know he can speak well. He is already on his way to meet you and he will be glad to see you. You shall speak to him and put words in his mouth. I will help both of you speak and will teach you what to do. He will speak to the people for you and it will be as if he were your mouth and as if you were God to him. But take this staff in your hand so you can perform the signs with it. Tonight I wanna talk to you about limit lies. I wanna talk to you about limit lies and how so many of us, we know where the Lord's calling us to go, we know what he's telling us to step into, we know who he's calling us to reach and engage with, but we believe these limit lies that turn into excuses that keep us from going. Let's pray one more time. Jesus, may you free people tonight. May you have your way. God, may we not be limited in lies of the enemy anymore, but be freed by your truth as it is spoken. It's in your name we pray, amen. All right, you can have a seat. Say, limit lies. So as I was kind of prepping for this and how sinking through limits, my mind went to time limits on the phone. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? A time limit? <laughs> They're like the worst. And it's funny because I literally am the one that like puts the time limits on my apps because I'm like, I know that I don't need this. But then when it tells me that my time's up, I'm like, no, I'm good. Like, I, I can have some more time on Instagram. I'm good. And so I just completely will ignore the time limit. Or maybe you don't have social media and you're not missing out on anything. It's just sometimes I need more of a break. Maybe you don't have social media or a phone and so you're like, I don't really get the time limit thing. But let's talk about maybe video games, right? There's a time limit on video games. And if your time limit isn't that the game is up and that you have to head to dinner, it's your mom or your dad or whoever coming in and unplugging it and saying, I don't care that you're not done with this, time limit's up. Anybody relate? Yeah, people like felt that one. Like that was just me earlier, Rachel, actually. That was too soon, too soon. Or maybe like, you, you know there's time limits with food, right? Food has an expiration date. Some of you probably don't even care about that and you're like, I don't care how expired it is, I'm gonna eat it if it's in my fridge or if it's in my pantry, that's crazy. But food has a time limit. Like for instance, a few days ago, so Larry and I were gone for a whole week and before we left, we got some groceries. And so when we got back, we still had some bagels. I love a good bagel with cream cheese in the morning for breakfast. And so I go put my bagel in, spread the cream cheese and I go into the living room and Larry's like, you know that's probably expired, right? And I was like, no, like it's fine. Like I know it's not. And he's like, you should check. And I had like already taken a bite. I was like already in this, you know what I mean? And so I go to check and you know how sometimes you literally can't find the expiration date? Like it's literally the hardest thing ever. And so I was about to give up and I'm like, I literally don't know where this is at. And so I'm just gonna eat it whether it's expired or not. And then I found it and it was most definitely expired. And so even with food, there's a time limit. Right after a certain point of time, it actually might make you sick if you eat it. Or we think of sports, right? There's a time limit on certain games, on every game. And some of us, we don't like that because we just want to keep hustling. But the reality is, is if you didn't have a time limit and you kept going, you'd actually probably really hurt your knees. You'd hurt your body. Like you need the time limit for the sports to be over so you can rest and reset to be able to be your healthiest and best for your next game, right? And so we live where there's a lot of time limits around us, whether we realize it or not, whether we ignore them or not. And the reason why we have time limits is because after a certain point in time, it's actually not good for us to keep consuming something or to stay in that same place. That when the time limit is up, we got to be done. We have to move on. I know for me, like with Instagram, when my time limit's up, I probably should just get off of it, right? Because if I don't listen to that limit, 
Now I'm constantly looking at to the left and to the right of everybody else's life and I'm comparing, right? Or if I'm doing these other things, if I'm not listening to a time limit when it comes to something I'm eating, I'm gonna get sick. If I'm not listening to a time limit when it comes to sports, I might actually hurt myself. And so time limits matter. And we, we have them around us more than we realize. And time limits are important because once you hit a certain limit, it's not always good for you to stay in that same place. And the truth is, within this, is that we read this story of Moses and he was pretty aware of some of his limits, right? He was pretty aware of some of the ways that he was limited because the truth is, is that me, you, we as a whole, we have limits. We have them, we're, we're not just around them, but we have limits within our own lives. But the amazing thing is that you may have limits, but we serve a limitless God who is limitless in supplies of grace and of mercy and of goodness and of kindness and of forgiveness. And that's something to celebrate. But we, we have limits. For instance, I have a limit when it comes to this Florida heat, y'all. Like, after I'm outside for literally five minutes, I'm like, time limit is up. I need to go inside. Because if I don't, I literally think I'm going to pass out. Anybody else? Okay, I was about to say, if I'm the only one, something is wrong. I have a time limit when it comes to this. It's not even just the heat. It's the humidity, too. It's terrible. It's literally terrible. Thank you. I, I have a time limit when it comes to social media. I have a time limit in my knowledge of things. You don't know everything. I don't know everything. There's still even so much that I've yet to discover about God and his word. There's still so much I've yet to discover as I live my life with Jesus about who he is. That I don't know it all and there's a limit to my knowledge. There's a limit to your knowledge. But we serve a limitless God. And the tension within this is that we know that we have limits, right? And that's actually not a bad thing. But what is the problem? I need you to hear me. What is the problem is that whenever we allow our limits to become excuses to doing what God's calling us to do and being who he's calling us to be. Like Moses, I read about Moses. One of his limits is that he probably wasn't the best, it sounds like, at speaking in front of a crowd, at talking to people. Instead of recognizing that as a limit and saying, I know that I'm weak in this and that's okay, it's now turned into, this is a limit of mine and I'm so weak and this is a weakness of mine that God, I, like who am I to even go? And now it's, he's made it an excuse for him to say, no, I'm this, I don't need to go. If I'm honest with you, and if I could confess where I fall short of this because I'm not perfect at this, there's so many moments, it's funny, even in this season that I'm in right now, where I find myself limiting myself with thoughts that I have about myself that aren't true, with things that I'll even speak about myself in a moment that isn't kind or isn't who God says I am. And it limits me in moments to where when I should step up, I step down. Where I should speak up, I just stay quiet. Whenever I should actually take charge and lead, I don't. Because then I get into my head of, I believe that I'm limited in these ways and now I'm thinking, well, what, what are people going to think of me? Or what are, what, how are people going to perceive me? I feel like Moses was there. Moses is like, what, what, are, what is Pharaoh going to say? What, it, what is he going to do? 
I'm so focused on the opinion of these people and the perception, and I call these limit lies because they're limiting you in their lies for what God wants to do. And Moses has a certain language that he uses. He says, what if I am, who am I? So maybe some of you in this room, you, you know that God is calling you to be more set apart. But what if they, they stop being my friend and they think I'm weird? Some of you, there's dreams inside of your heart that God has been doing and you just need to take action and go for it. But you think, I am not smart enough. I don't know what I'm doing. I can't step into that. For some of you, God's calling you to serve in certain ways. Maybe it's you want to speak someday. You want to preach. You want to lead us in worship. But you think, well, like what Moses, I stutter. I don't know how to talk in front of people. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. If only you knew what I just went through or what I just did. Can I tell you that Moses had a past? That God was, like God knows all things. Moses had, was actually in this place when God, when God confronted him because he had actually fleed from his home because he had murdered somebody. And so because of this, Moses was so afraid of what people, if everybody knew what had happened and what they would have done to him. So he ran away and he thought that he could outrun God. And he thought that if he just ran far enough that God wouldn't get a hold of him again. And so he ran and God appears to him and says, I see this issue. I see what's going on. And because he is who he is, he could do it all on his own. But he's saying, but go, because I'm sending you. And God knew about his past. And that's, that doesn't define us. He knew it didn't define Moses. And it didn't make him who he was. And he was more than that in Jesus. But some of us, we think of our past and we think, I am way too broken, and I am way too messed up, and I could never do that. Or maybe you think of your present, and you're like, the things that I've done, the ways that I've thrown my body on people, or the, the things that I've watched, the things that I've said, I'm not worthy. But can I tell you, that if you don't realize your worth in this place, that God calls you worthy, not because of who you are, but because of what he's done on the cross. He died for you and he rose again. And you are daughters and sons of him. And so you're worthy enough because of that. But some of you think, I'm not worthy. Some of you think, what if they don't listen? What if I try to stick up for my friend? What if I try to stick up for my family member and they don't listen? And so then you know what happens? After we go through this period of all these limit lies, we get to a place where we say, Lord, pardon your servant. Send someone else like Moses did. Lord, I hear you and I hear what you're saying, but I need you to pardon me. And I need you to just send somebody else. And God's like, you don't get it. You don't get it. I know everything about you. I know your past and your present and your future. And he's looking at some of you tonight. Just like he was looking at Moses. And he's saying, go. Go to those places. Go back to your families. Go back to your schools. And don't just blend in and fit in. But I'm telling you this school year to go and to stand out. To go and to live on mission. To go and preach the gospel. To go and be my hands and feet. And, I, and, and God's heard every what if. 
He's saying it's time for you to go. To go and leave the rooms where gossip is. And to talk highly of the people in your life. To go and leave the places and the people that when you're around them, you're actually worse because of it. And to go and find and be a person that makes people better and more like Jesus. He's saying you may be the only person that even follows Jesus in your home, but I need you to go right now and I need you to go home tonight and I need you to tell them about the goodness of God and I need you to bring them to me because there's more that I wanna do. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter how old you are. It's time for you to go. It's time for you to go. And just like Moses, he thought he could stay in the limit lies. And just like God got a hold of him, he's gonna get a hold of you too. And the excuses are gonna run out because he is who he is. Say, I am who I am. Come on. You see, something that really stands out to me in this passage, it sounds simple, but this has been a phrase that has genuinely kept me grounded and has helped me to have peace and joy in the unknown. As Moses is questioning God and he's worrying and he's anxious, God says to him, Moses, I will be with you. I will be with you. Can I tell you that he is with us tonight and he's with you every place that you go? You see, but the thing is, I think so many of us like Moses Sometimes that phrase just slips, slips past us because we try to live in self-confidence. I got it, God. And God's saying, just like you said to Moses, for what's ahead and how I want to use you, you can't rely on yourself anymore. It's not going to be self-confidence. It's going to be God-confidence in me and who I am. Because... God couldn't accomplish, Moses couldn't accomplish what he did on his own. Clearly, you can't accomplish the things that God's instilled in you on your own. We need God's confidence to say that I may have no idea what's to come. I may be afraid of going into this school year. I don't know what it's going to look like. I'm worried about my family or, or the dynamics in my friend group or my family. And I don't, I don't even know what next week may look like with them. And God says, I will be with you. Release confidence in yourself and take hold of my confidence that sustains you and keeps you in every moment. He's with you, youth for the one He's with you and he sees you and he loves you. And people may have left. Parents may have walked out. Friends may have walked out. Siblings may have gone. Everyone in your life may be so inconsistent. And you don't even know if you can rely on the people that matter most to you. And God is saying that despite anybody else's presence in your life, I will never, not only is he with you, but he will never, ever leave you or never, ever forsake you. And he's with you until your last breath. And so people may have left. Can I tell you that God hasn't? That friends come and go. I've had some really, really, really hard friend breakups in my life that made me just cry and cry and cry for weeks when I was in middle school and high school. I've had people that I thought were gonna be in my life right now don't even know what they're up to, haven't talked to them. And I've had to hold on to this promise that man may betray me, but God hasn't 
and he never will. That he's with you. And he's your confidence in every single moment of every single season. And back in March, back in March, I want to share something with you. I got a text from a friend. Don't put it up just yet. But I got a text from a friend. It was really random. I hadn't even been, like, talking with this friend. It was one of those things where God was speaking to her about me, and she texted me about it. And I still haven't forgotten about it. And so this text, you can go ahead and put it up on the screen. She texted me back in March, and this is what she said to me. She's a mom, so she said, after I dropped the boys off at their friends this morning, I was praying for you, and I felt like a word God gave me was limitless. I will be praying that word over you over the course of this year. There are no limits to how God might want to use you in any limit that's ever been put on you by others or by yourself is going to be completely lifted by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I came here tonight to tell you, you can keep the text up there, that your time limit is up. That the time limit is up over your fear, over your anxiety, over your insecurities, over your pride, over your past fears or your present worries. The time limit is up. The time limit is up and you're called to go. Because tonight God wants to completely lift by the power of his Holy Spirit the limit lies you've been sitting in for far too long. Time is up, friends. The time is up. You know that God is calling you to go. You know that God is calling you to be. I am who I am. I am who I am is who he says to you tonight. That it is limitless what I want to do in and through you. There are no limits because I am who I am. And I am limitless, and therefore, through you, I am going to work in ways that only I can. Who believes that in this place tonight? There's, this, there's these scriptures in Ephesians. And I love these passages of scripture. It says in Ephesians, if we can put it up on the screen. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever, amen. Can I tell you, come on, that I've seen God do far more than I could ever ask or imagine, not just in my own life, but in your lives in this room. And so I'm done personally living in limit lies and limiting myself and ultimately limiting God in that. And I'm saying, God, I'm yours because I know that you will be what you will be and there's no limits for how you're gonna use me. And so I'm done doubting myself. I'm done putting you in a box with how I put myself in a box. You don't need the position, you don't need the title of pastor to operate as a pastor and speak and preach the word of God to your peers around you. You don't need the title of any certain thing to go and be that thing. You don't need a title to be the hands and feet of God. That's what you've been called to do. It's time to go. It's time to go. Can we stand to our feet in this place? We sing this song, What a God. And I can't help but think, I didn't get to this part in the story yet, but Moses, he ended up going, praise God. I was a little worried for him, honestly. He ended up going and the people were freed. 
and he crossed the sea with the people and he ended up getting to walk into the promised land with them. And I can't help but think what Moses probably was feeling. That God, when I put limits on myself and when I put limits on you and the limit lies were so strong, what a God you were to be faithful to your word and faithful to your promises. And so when we sing what a God, sing in faith for believing for the things you've, you've even yet to see yet in your life. That for the things I have seen, I'm believing that I'm gonna see them again. For the things I'm still praying for and hoping for, I know that in God's time, He's gonna show up. And so I want us to sing this out. And I want us to lift our hands. And I want us to sing this out like we've seen a God 